Hello, I'm Dale. Welcome back to Gecko Board. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a live dashboard for Google Analytics 4. In some of our previous videos, we explored how you can visualize GA4 metrics within the platform itself. However, even though GA4 is a powerful data visualization tool, there are still many instances where you may need to use a dashboard tool like Gecko Board to get the most out of your Google Analytics data. Let's first just quickly take a look at a few examples. Number one, you want to display your metrics on a TV dashboard. GA4 is a fantastic tool, but it's not designed to be a TV dashboard tool. For this, you need a dashboard tool like Gecko Board, which is optimized for permanent TV display. Number two, when you want to display your GA4 metrics alongside metrics from other data sources. Most of the time, our business KPIs come from multiple data sources, Shopify, Salesforce, Zendesk, as well as website KPIs from Google Analytics. If we want to see all of our metrics in one place, we need a dashboard tool that integrates with all of the tools you use. Number three, not everybody can access Google Analytics. Not everybody has a Google Analytics account, and of the ones that do, not everybody knows how to use it. This is especially the case since the launch of GA4. A dashboard can help you communicate your metrics with the entire team, regardless of people's skill set. Number four, context. A dashboard, unlike Google Analytics, allows you to add valuable context in the form of goals and status indicators. This makes your dashboard and your metrics far more meaningful for your team who are trying to interpret what they mean to them. Okay, so let's start building our dashboard. Now, so here we are in GA4. Um, so I'm gonna assume that you've already got your GA4 account set up for your website and it's tracking um, data in, in the right way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to geckobot.com. If you already have an account, then log in. And if you don't, just click the sign up button here and sign up for a free 14 day trial. There are no credit cards required or anything like that. Um, so you can just go ahead and check out the product. Okay, so I've just signed up for a completely new account and this is the screen that I'm greeting with. This is my company dashboard, this is my default dashboard, and it is a blank blue screen because this dashboard is what I'm gonna be filling up with data visualizations we call widgets. Um, and by building up these widgets, um, I'm gonna create my very own bespoke dashboard for GA4. So to get started, I'm just gonna click here on add widget. And that's going to take me through to a data connection screen. Now, before I can build my widget, I need to connect my live Google Analytics data. And here we have all kinds of options of data you can connect to your dashboard, from Excel to Salesforce to Zendesk to Shopify. And this is one of the great things about Gecko Board. If you want to see your GA data alongside your Shopify data, then you can build a dashboard that includes the two. So to begin with, I'm going to start with Google Analytics 4. Now, as you can see, it's giving me options of widgets to build with GA4. I'm just gonna click on uses this week because the next thing it's gonna ask me to do is to connect my GA4 data. Now, all I need to do here is just sign in with Google. Um, it takes me through to the uh, GA4 screen. Um, and here I just click on my profile, click allow for it to connect the Google Analytics data into Gecko Board. So now I've connected my data, it's taking me through to this screen where I can further customize and build my widget. So at the minute, this is preset to the total number of users this week, and it's displaying the number of users this week. Uh, but if I didn't want to show this as the number of users, I could change this to, for example, the number of new users. Um, or I could, if I wanted to, um, change it to the number of users today. Um, so I'm just going to change that back to the total users and the um, users this week. Um, and once I'm happy with my widget, I can just add that to the dashboard. And here it takes us back to that initial dashboard building screen. As we can see, it, the widget has been added. And if we want, we can move this around the dashboard. So we can move this over there. We can make this bigger. And it becomes really easy to build a custom dashboard using your GA4 data. I'm going to show you some of the things we can do. Um, so this is the number of users this week. So let's say I want to see this as um, a total number, but I also want to see this as a line chart. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add another widget and I'm going to select GA4 data again, and I'm gonna select users this week again. Um, but this time, instead of choosing a number visualization, 
I'm going to choose a line chart visualization. And this shows me the number of users this week. Now, it's the start of the week, so I'm only getting um, the first day there. So maybe this would be make more sense to, instead of visualizing the number of users this week, I could visualize the number of users in the past seven days. As we can see there, that's the trend for how many users have been using the website in the past seven days. So I'm going to add that to the dashboard. And I'm going to change this to also be the number of users of the past seven days. So these two metrics tally up. And I'm just going to change that to past seven days. And what I can do now is I can combine these two widgets. Um, and I can just move those around. I move those up, and as you see, it becomes really easy to start building visualizations with your data. Um, so now I'm going to retitle this to say, you know, this is the number of users. Uh, it says the past seven days, um, and I don't need this title anymore. And you can see we've got users, we've got number of users the past seven days, and then we've got that visualized as a line chart. So as well as users, I think I'm also interested in uh, where those users have come from, which medium they've come from. Um, so again, I can go to add a widget. I can select GA4 data, um, and I'm going to select users this week again. I'm going to change that back to past seven days just to keep everything in sync. And this time, instead of choosing a number, I'm going to choose a leaderboard because I want to see a leaderboard of the number of users have come through this week from different sources. Now, as you can see, after choosing leaderboard, we've got an option here for label, which is a type of secondary dimension. And um, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to search for medium. So I want um, I want first user medium to kind of tie up with the number of users there. And it's built this leaderboard, and I'm going to add that to the dashboard too. Um, so it starts with the, with the highest and then moves on to the second. So we've got organic and then direct, which is uh, displaying as none. We've got cost per click and we've got referral. And if we just make this a little bit bigger, we can see some of the other sources as well, such as email and paid search. Now I'm going to add this to my group over here. I'm going to expand this out. And as you can see, it becomes really, really easy to start building up um, your really insightful dashboards that show you exactly what's going on with your website. Um, so we've got users, past seven days. I'm going to change this title here to by medium so we know what's happening beneath there. So next, I think I'd like to see the number of conversions. Now, I've configured Google Analytics 4 um, to trigger a conversion every time we get a new newsletter sign up. In order to show that, I'm just going to go back to add a widget. I'm going to choose Google Analytics 4 um, and Instead of choosing one of these preset widgets, I'm just going to build my own widget because we don't have to choose from these preset widgets. We can go straight into building our own. Actually, it's come up on conversion there first. So we've had 375 over the past seven days. Um, so this is exactly what I need. If I wanted to find conversions, I would just go here into the display uh, field and type in conversions. As we can see there, conversions event. My events, like I say, are set up um, to trigger every time somebody signs up to one of my newsletters. Um, and this is showing for the past seven days. So like the um, like the series of widgets are here showing the number of users, I can also show the number of newsletter signups. So again, um, instead of going to add widget, and I'm going to show you a little trick here where you can just actually duplicate the widget and then go into edit it. So it's created the exact same widget again. Um, I'm going to, in this time, instead of seeing conversions um, as a total number, I'd again like to see it as a line chart. And so we have conversions, line chart, past seven days, save. And it becomes very easy to build up another series of widgets just like with my users. So I'm going to rename that conversions. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to make that clear that that is for the uh, past seven days. And I'm going to duplicate one more widget um, to be able to show where those signups have come from. So just like I can see my um, where my users have come from by medium, I'm going to go into here and I'm going to um, edit this and um, not show my conversions by line chart, but show my conversions by leaderboard. Go back into labels, look for medium. I'm going to look for first user medium like I did before. Save. And again, let's just even these up so they're looking looking like similar sets of widgets. 
Gonna move that around there, put that there, and make sure this is titled by medium. So let's add some more metrics. Um, so let's go back into add widget. I think I'd like to see engagement time um, of my website. So here we see there is a pre-built widget called engagement time. It makes it nice and easy. And I want this also to be showing for the last seven days, it's showing it as a number. And we can see now we've got a comparison with the previous seven days. So we can see that the engagement time for the website, 54 seconds over the last seven days, and how that has changed versus the previous seven days. Um, and so that is with this feature here. So let's just delete this and recreate it so I can show you. Um, so if you want to show some context for your metric, then this is a fantastic way to do it. You can go to compare previous period, um, you can look at it as a percentage or as a finite amount, and you can compare that to a different time period. Um, so that's what's included there. So if I add that to a dashboard as well, we can see we've got engagement time. And as well, I'd also like to include engagement rates. So I'm going to go back to add widget, I'm going to go to Google Analytics 4, and see here we've got another option for engagement rate this month. I'd like to keep all of my timings the same. Um, I'm going to change this back to the past seven days, not just this month. I'm going to add one final metric in here. Um, and I'm going to add in the number of events per session. Um, so as we know, Google Analytics 4 tracks all kinds of events which are happening on your website. Um, it's the, one of the ways it, it kind of breaks down um, analytics when, in the new Google Analytics 4. And I'd like to see the number of events which have happened in each session. So I'm just going to build this um, as a new widget. I'm going to look for events. So here we've got events per session, which is what I'm looking for, past seven days, fantastic. And again, I think I'd like to include another comparison to the previous period, to, to the previous seven days. Um, and I'd like to show that as a percentage. In fact, I think I'd like to show all of these as a percentage. Um, so here we can just edit this and go back in and switch this from um, an amount, a direct amount to a percentage, just so everything is nice and consistent. Okay, so we've got, I'm just going to name this as well so we know what it is, events per session. I'm also going to rename this. In fact, what I'm going to do is, because all of these widgets relate to the same time period, um, what I can do is I can group all of them. Pull that out nice and big, and I can say up here, engagement past seven days. Now I know exactly what this is referring to and how long. So I've got engagement time related to the past seven days. I've got the engagement rate um, relating to the past seven days versus previous seven days, just so it's labeled nice and clear so people know exactly what they're looking at. And I've got the events per session versus previous seven days. So everything's labeled nice and clear and you can see that groups allow you to label things nice and clearly as well. So um, there's a few other things we can do. I'm just going to even, I'm just going to even all this up so it's nice and even. Now one of the other things we can do with this dashboard is we can add goals. We can add goals to some of these metrics. Now we've spoken about our team that we'd like to be getting about 450 signups uh, for our newsletter every week. Um, and what we can do here is we could add a goal directly to this metric. So we could set a goal um, of 450, and that would display where we are in relation to that goal. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to add a goal on this particular widget. I'm going to add a, wid a goal to our line chart, because actually it's much more important um, to see how we're doing as an average, I think. So instead of adding a goal to our big widget there, we can set a goal here. So again, more than 50 a day is where we want to be. I'm going to apply that there, and you can see that on the days we're hitting that goal, it's showing it's showing up here, and the days we aren't, it's showing down here. And um, so that's just another way of adding status to your um, to your dashboard. Similarly, uh, we can show some some status indicators to show when something isn't right. So let's, for example, say we want our engagement rate to always be above fifty percent. Um, and when it's above 50%, we want to give a great big green thumbs up to that, just so people know this is going well. What we can do here is we can come in and add a status indicator. Um, so we can set success, 
when it is 50% and above. And if we just save that, you can see we now have a nice green tick showing us that this, this metric is okay and we're on target. Similarly, we could add um, status indicators which show when we're doing poorly. Um, so let's, for example, imagine that um, 4.346 events per session isn't good enough. And you know what? I think this is a little bit too much detail. Um, so I'm going to go into the number formatting there and I'm going to move this to a fixed number of decimal places. I think just one decimal place is fine. That's all we need to see. But I'd like to show, I'd like to show this widget as being um, almost on alert when we move below five. So I just add a warning here for whenever we hit five or below. And if I add five there, you can see it's triggered a warning to say, hey, the number of events per session is a little lower than we've expected it to be. And so all of a sudden you can see that we're getting lots of great visual context from this dashboard. It's really easy to interpret what's going on. It's easy to see where we are in relation to our goals. It's easy to see what the metrics mean, what time span they cover. And it's just a very clear way of looking at your GA4 metrics when you're looking to communicate them with the team. And on the point of communicating these metrics with the team, as we know, not everybody wants to go into GA4, so this is a really easy way of showing those metrics, perhaps with um, senior management, perhaps with team members who don't know how to use GA4. Um, so it becomes a really easy way to share those metrics. And we do have some fantastic sharing options. Um, so we can create a sharing link, um, which makes it really easy to share this dashboard via a link. So if I just create a link there, all of a sudden we have a live dashboard, uh, which is accessible via any browser. Similarly, uh, we can set up email snapshots to have this dashboard um, sent to our email accounts um, whenever we want it to, or we can set up snap snapshots um, to send directly to our Slack channel. So really easy to connect your Slack account and have this dashboard come directly to your Slack channel. Um, or you may want to send it to TV. So we have this really easy um, send to TV sharing option, which makes it really easy to connect to a TV. We've got some other documentation on the website um, for how to set up a TV dashboard. Um, so if you want to turn this into a TV dashboard, it's completely optimized for TV and it's really easy to get that onto a TV. So it's perhaps sharing with your team in your office, something like that. So there we go. Um, there's so much more to show you, but I just thought I wanted to give you an introduction to building GA4 dashboards with Gecko Board. The best thing to do is head over to Gecko Board, start a free trial, um, and connect your GA4 data, and then just start playing with the product and start building your own dashboards that are right for you. So maybe these metrics aren't the metrics that you're interested in. Maybe there's other metrics, there's other visualizations you want to show. But this is just to give you an idea of what's possible with the product um, and just how powerful it is for visualizing GA4 data, which is sometimes otherwise hard to access, particularly for different members of the team. So there we go, an effective, easy to build dashboard built with Gecko Board and Google Analytics. To build your own dashboard, just head over to geckoboard.com and start your free trial today. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the video, and if you have any questions at all, just leave those in comments and I will get back to you. Have a great day.